and just just take a look at yourself and 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 view just a few minutes span like in the evening sitting down relaxing how you i guarantee you that there are times where maybe you're watching tv and it flips to a commercial and you pick up the phone and you check your email you check like we're, we're not even knowing we're doing we're just conditioned to always be kind of connecting to all those things Welcome to 33 Tangents, a roundtable discussion covering a wide variety of topics from digital analytics to working remotely to current happenings in business and technology. Your hosts, Jason Thompson, John Naran, Jen Coons, and myself, Jim Driscoll, all live in different areas of the world, but work together in the same company. Our regular day-to-day conversations often go off in various directions, and the goal of this podcast is to share our ideas and find new ways to engage with others. So what's new? What's going on? Just had my piano tuned this morning, so I'm excited to uh, give it a a try. I I had, to tell you that I don't play by ear, I had thought it had gone flat by a whole step, but uh, it had only gone flat by a half a step, which apparently was a lot. Okay. (laughs) Out of tune, so I'm excited to go play it and see how much better I sound with an in tune piano that's nice. probably been out of tune for three years yeah. uh, uh we didn't mute you no we can't hear you <laughs> hold on i'm gonna stop recording for a second okay and then i was like okay great i'll, I'll use that and then you guys already didn't hear me you already started talking and i'm like no, okay that sounds, that sounds me that sounds absolutely made up well that's what happened so all right you guys were mean Uh, you guys were mean you guys were like bullies for like 20 30 seconds there i must say we're 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 i'm glad i saw this side of you guys you know we are we are professional podcasters and we have a high bar Whatever you need to rationalize what the (laughs) bullying, you know? Uh, I guess so. All right. So this week, um, now that we got all our issues resolved, but now we have new issues and that we're, I guess we're mean. I I didn't, I didn't realize Mm -hmm. that. So we'll have to Mm -hmm. evaluate. Um, so last week we, and I'm going to let you, you, you queue it up, Jim. Mm Mm-hmm. So this week we're going to continue. Um, yeah, we um, we're going to continue our conversation from last week. We were talking about vacations. So um, last week we, we we talked about actually God, I'm actually blanking on the specific vacation. We, we talked we talked about unlimited PTO and why that's right. It was say the unlimited PTO thing. conversation, right? It's the, the it's bank it's. And stuff. It's fake. Uh, it's it's fake vacation because it's really only used by companies for their benefit and not employees' benefits. Yeah, I had this brain fart as I started talking. I couldn't exactly remember what we talked about. But this week, I want to focus on you know a, a growing trend in the U.S. where people are not taking vacation time, whether it's uh, an accrued benefit or just something granted unlimited. You know, like people aren't taking it and. One of the things I'll, I, I sent out in the notes to both of you ahead of time, and I'll include in the show notes as well, is this infographic that was produced last year um, by Kimball Apps. So I'll include the link with, you know, is an infographic titled No Vacation Nation. And they're, they're talking about the growing trend of U.S. workers not taking their paid time off. And one of the things with their, you know, the, the study that they conducted is that 21% of Americans left more than five vacation days on the table. And, you know, jumping down in the infographics, so I have it up um, on the other screen here, um, almost half of, you know, peop- you know respondents uh, were checking in on work while they were vacationing. So they may have taken the paid time off, but they never really shut down. And, like, there, there's, you know, four things that there are four, four characteristics that they point out of you know, why they were there. But, you know, I wanted to kind of use this infographic as a starting point on, you know, the three of us talking about, you know, why do we, why are we seeing this? And what can a company do 
to ensure that people are taking the time off that they need to, to recharge. Uh, because, I mean, it, it's no secret that stress um, will, will, will get to you. Burnout is, is real. And people just need time off to, to recharge, to relax. And, and ultimately, that's where a lot of people come up with, you know, uh, new ways of, uh, of thinking, you know, new ideas, or, or you know, the, the such. Just you know, kind of being able to disconnect for a while. So that's what I want to talk about today: why people aren't taking vacation, and how can a company actually like, ensure people are taking vacation? And you're laughing, so I'm curious <laughs> to see what you're thinking. No, I got sidetracked when you said the such. Oh, okay. Isn't there is an old old YouTube video? It's got to be like ten years old or so. It's like the Miss Universe pageant or something where the contestant is talking about geography or something and she's like and the such, such as, as. And the oh such no as. i never saw that one, I'll have to look that one up. <laughs> yeah it was pretty funny you'll have to i'll, I'll send you a link <laughs> <Okay>. um <laughs> uh yeah i mean you know it's a it's an interesting conversation i and and maybe i'm not the right one to answer uh it because i i'm not very good at taking vacations uh, but i think it's for reasons other other than why I think most people aren't good at taking vacations. So um, may, maybe we should have a whole separate uh, paid podcast where it's Hila and I's conversations that are, are recorded and we, we pay, you know, you have to pay a premium to listen to that. Because I think we've had some, <laughs> so, <laughs> we've had some good, I think we had a phone call last week maybe where we were talking about um, the challenges specifically in, in corporate where it, it really is about the individual um, for and, and I don't want to say this is true across the board because the minute I say that someone's going to get upset and say no it's not true because of my company or this is how I, I get it like there, there, are, there are definitely ends of the um, of the spectrum but from my experience the, the fat part of the curve when looking at, at corporate it's, it's really about and built for the, the individual and so if that's the environment that I'm in, or if that's the environment that I feel that I'm in, then I'm going to be making decisions that are best for me. And I'm looking out for me. And if I'm looking out for me and I'm evaluating taking a vacation, I'm thinking, okay, what are the bad things that are going to happen if I take a vacation? If I take a vacation, then uh, maybe my boss is going to realize that I don't really even produce any value. Maybe they're going to see that I'm not needed. Maybe one of my coworkers is going to see it as an opportunity to step in and say, hi, I can do a better job than Jason. And when I get back, I've lost my position. Uh, so I think there's a lot of things that, that people think about specifically around that the thought that I have to be out for myself in the corporate world. And if I take vacation, it's putting me at risk for losing my place on the on the ladder. I agree. I think um, part of it is also kind of thinking, okay, what, what's the right time? And to your point, Jason, like if I walk away now, is this the right time? We have this big project or whatever. Uh, somebody else might step in during my absence. So um, kind of thinking what would be the a good time to walk away and and come back and still be in the same place is kind of hard to uh, envision, um, especially when you have to do it in advance. So if it's true vacation that you're gonna enjoy some specific time or do do, do some sort of outing with your family or whatever, uh, it's something that has to be scheduled in advance and it's very difficult to kind of think, okay, you know, three months from now, what will happen, you know, when I'm absent from, from these projects and you know, how will that impact my positioning within the company? I would imagine that that's, that's a key component. Um, with the other one being the fact that typically when you, when you go on vacation, when you come back, if it, if it wasn't structured properly ahead of time, uh, or just if the dynamics at the company is, is, is a little more difficult, it's you come back and there's just a pile of work that I've piled up for you. Um, so if it's, if their work is very task driven and very specific to you, um, then you could, you would expect that you, you take a week off or two weeks off, you're going to have to almost like prepare to come back, you know, to all this mountain of work as opposed to you know, really come back rejuvenated with new ideas. It's typically kind of seen the other way around. So, 
Mm-hmm. Does that does that speak again to the individuality of of corporate? Meaning that in an ideal scenario, wouldn't we want our our management team um, to to help provide more structure to allow that to be a more uh, refreshing time? Shouldn't our coworkers come together and we work with them to cover for us while we were out where possible? Uh, but not only cover to help build a plan. You know, if there's any extended, even a week, you know. Uh, things mm-hmm. can pile up uh, drastically after a week, you know, shouldn't our coworkers be in a position to step in and help transition us back into work so it's not this this overwhelming thing? And if that isn't happening, again, does that speak to this individual nature that we're, we're really all out for, for ourselves? I think it has to do not just with the thought that we're all uh, kind of out for ourselves, it's more that the structure within organization, especially in a corporate environment, I see this a lot that, you know, people, I hate to say work in isolation because it's that's not always the case, but the the individual role or their skill set or their contribution is very uh, unique and specific. So specific that, you know, there's not a lot of overlap. I mean, if some, someone specializes in a specific realm of uh, the digital marketing ecosystem or whatnot, um, if they walk off, there's not a lot of overlap with other members of the team that can kind of step in to at least provide some coverage or, you know, listen in on conversations or join meetings that that person usually would have sat in on and consumed information. So I think it's just the structure of teams in general that uh, individualize the the skill set and the role within an organization. And there's not a lot of um, g- good solidified communication across individuals and across teams. So I think that's probably the 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 reason why it's so hard for people to cover for you or or at least kind of bring you up to speed because they weren't like immersed in what you typically do day to day yeah no that's a that's a fair point so i'm wondering if of those two scenarios jim what's your thought on are are people evaluating that in state and saying I know that it's not really going to be a vacation because halfway through I'm going to start stressing out about things piling up in my inbox and I'm going to have to work double time to catch back up when I get back in. Or do they just accept that as a necessary part of it and they're just not taking vacations for the former conversation of, you know, if I leave, it's going to expose me to a lot of risk um, or, or is it something else? No, I, I think it, it's, it's a very real possibility and one leads to the other. So... The, um, you know, the one where it's like you start stressing out about halfway through about the stuff piling up ultimately leads to people not taking time off because they, it, to them it feels easier to just deal with the stress of not taking time off than to deal with the stress of coming back to either an emergency. And I'll be honest, I'm, I'll speak from my own experience. I mean, when I take time off, I do, and this is a bit of my own personal anxiety, I, I don't like the idea of, hey, th- if something were to go awry and it was something that I could fix or maybe it's something I was working on right before I left and the problem was found after I left, um, I mean, there, there's the guilt of other people having to come in and solve that problem. Um, so, I mean, th- th- that's a very real thing. But no, I think it, it's, um, and part of it is, is you know, looking again at this infographic, you know, th- th- there's a lot of people that, you know, feel that, they the the amount of stress of what they're going to you know of the work that they're expecting to walk back into never lets them really ever relax so you know they're 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 like you know i'm just going to continue to 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 work go ahead i was i was gonna say i think it's also because there's no like common structure for how people decide when to take a vacation and for how long. Um, So there's nothing, there's no like guidance or support 
to say, okay, you know, every six months, if I schedule this, this is going to be exactly a good cadence for both me and the organization I work for or my boss. Um, how do I interact with other folks on the team to make sure we're not taking, you know, we're not off at the same time, or, or maybe that's okay. I think there's, there's no like known structure for how to go about it. So everyone kind of has to fend for themselves in terms of figuring that out, you know? Um, and yeah. it's kind of like dipping your toe in the water and seeing if it's okay, you know, like, mm. oh, I'm starting to think about a vacation. Is it okay? And that's kind of no way to plan something, especially if it includes your family. Uh, it becomes very difficult if other people have to take off from their job and, you know, uh, kids from school and, and stuff like that, you know, it becomes a little difficult to kind of manage. So I think um, that that's part of it as well. I, I know that for me, that's always a hesitation, like to pull the trigger on a plan and kind of like, how do I check with everyone, you know, um, uh, that it'll be okay for me to miss that time. So... Yeah, and I think it's it's bared out in the numbers in this infographic that there there seems to be I, either Hila alluded to the lack of um, a framework in place at companies to support um, going on vacation. You know, we look at vacation as something that is is there for our employees to use, and it's just a benefit. But you know, you brought up something Hila that I hadn't really thought about, and that is you put the benefit out there, but, but you don't put a structure in place for people to actually use that benefit. Um, and I'm sure that there are lots of companies out there thinking about that. I just hadn't, I had never thought about it that in, in those terms. Um, and again, if you look at the numbers, it seems like there's a, a big percentage of people that aren't taking vacation because they feel like they're not supported by their, their manager in taking vacation or people outright saying, it's, you know, I'm, I'm afraid that my, my request wouldn't be approved, which is an interesting side topic going back to our previous conversation where um, the the unlimited PTO was attacked and that um, regular uh, PTO was better because, you know, you had to get approval for, for taking unlimited time off. That still holds true here. And again, the mm -hmm. numbers are showing that it's a huge portion of anxiety for people that they feel like their requests are, are, are not supported by their, their management team. Yeah. And I mean, I kind of going back to that, I, any company I've worked at, regardless of what the PTO policy is unlimited versus earned benefit, you still have to request approval. And sometimes the approval is, is we, we want to make sure that four people aren't taking off on the same week so that there's at least some kind of, of, of coverage you know, at, at all times. Um, but what would, you know, um, I, I am curious about that one, you know, the, the people feeling nervous that their request won't be approved. What do you think could lead to something like that? You know, people f fearing, saying, hey, I'd like to take this time off. Lack that of they trust. asked. <laughs> Which one was I was going to say that, that maybe because they asked before and uh, they were shot down once and, or maybe twice and and now they're kind of feeling discouraged yeah i mean i think that that definitely could play into it and i and i definitely think lack of of trust that that my management team has my best interest in mind again if if i take this very um dark view of the world that it's a uh, lord of the flies type environment within the corporate office then I don't know that I trust that my management team is there to support me because I think that they're making decisions that are going to get them their next promotion and not necessarily what's what's best for me. So I, I, I think there's there's probably past history, um, as, as Hila mentioned, mm -hmm. and I think there's, there's probably a bit of uh, a lack of trust that um, anyone in the organization has my best interests in mind. I think the derailing the career one is a big one too that plays into it, and I, I, you know, I that's kind of what I was. I want to tackle that one in a little bit, like kind of yeah, like okay. that one. All okay, on so I, I think it definitely plays into it as well. Because there's, uh, you know, because I think at this point we've talked about you know, the people that you know, they they they're just they're they're, they're stressed either you know even just re, you know requesting it they don't have the support whether it's through management to to actually give them the time off, um, as well as those that are just like, I don't want to deal with the stress of coming back. I'm not actually going to be relaxed. We talked about that. Yeah. There's two other aspects I want to kind of hand, talk about as well. So pivot the conversation a bit. Uh, I do want to I want to wrap up a bit with the derail my career 
because that's one which I think is much different than the others. Um, so the other one is the, you know, the people who don't unplug. And so we're recording this one a, a couple weeks in advance when it's actually going to go out. But like next week, I'm kind of going to do that half work, half vacation thing. Um, so we'll use me as a bit of an example when we talk about, you know, the people who they go away on vacation, but they're on their phones, they're on their laptops and they're not really shutting off. So I'm heading to the, the, the shore with, 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 with the family, um, both like you know, part of the week, it's going to be with my family. Part of the week is going to be with my, my wife's family. But one of the things I'm going to be doing is, is getting up in the early in the morning. This is my plan at least get up early in the morning do some work, make sure things continue to move along, items are addressed, anything critical that comes in, take care of, and then shut down for a better part of the day, go do some fun stuff with the family, and then probably log on in the evening again, just to make sure everything is continuing to move along. Um, I mean, this was a, a choice that I made just because of you know, circumstances this year. Um, you know, I was out for three and a half weeks on paternity leave just back you know, two months ago. Um, and then I want to take a little bit of time in September. So it was part of it was like the, the guilt started to creep in, you know, at that point, you know, am I taking too much time in a short span of time, you know, pretty much all of April, you know, a, a week, the end of June, beginning of July, and then some time in September. So I'm like, you know, this one, because of, we have the flexible work environment, I can do both and, you know, again, try to have some fun with it as well. Um, I want to try to take the laptop and go to a few fun places to, to say I'm working from fun places. So I digress a bit. But you know, what about those people that you know maybe they don't feel that they have a choice, or even those that you know in my situation where they have a choice and they're deciding I'm going to work and vacation. You know, do you, do you necessarily relax at that point? Yeah, and and I think there are multiple things in in play there, and I think I can identify three specific scenarios that play into that. N number one is just kind of lifestyle and we're, we're in this environment where it's and I, and I think er, very early on we had a podcast episode where we talked about always being connected always on if you remember that episode I, I think that comes into play here and that's I think that's independent of work you know that's just psychologically we've been conditioned to always be connected and just just take a look at yourself and 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 view just a few minutes span like in the evening sitting down relaxing how you i guarantee you that there are times where maybe you're watching tv and it flips to a commercial and you pick up the phone and you check your email you check like we're, we're not even okay. knowing we're doing we're just conditioned to always be kind of connecting to all those things so I, I i think that's something that that probably has to be addressed at a at a wider level from a from a business perspective i think there are a couple things that come into play number one is i'm going to go back to this this um concept of of trust and so if an employee maybe doesn't feel safe um, to to go on vacation and 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 ensure and I trust in my team to to cover for me or I trust that uh, I'm not going to be judged negatively for for taking time off which you mentioned Jim you know that that's there's that lack of trust component there where uh, you know that's a big reason for staying connected because at least it it kind of relieves some of my anxiety even if it doesn't change anything by me checking in at least it makes me feel a little bit better that I'm still somewhat connected there. And then the third piece, which I think is the most dangerous piece, is um, that it's it's actually a direct expectation that you know I tell you, Jim, yeah, that's great, you can take vacation, but uh, I'm I'm requiring you to check in three times a day. I expect you to do X, Y, and Z. You know, if I email you, I expect a response back within an hour. On you know, if that's I'm sure that is happening in some environments as well. Um, and that's the most, I think, dangerous one that, that, that should be addressed. I think the other ones are more psychological and things that we're creating in our head and that we can address as individuals. Um, if it's happening systemically at an organizational level, that's something that a leadership in the organization really needs to address to remove that. Um, and, and not to say there aren't there aren't occasions where it's important. You know, as, as Hila mentioned, some organizations are very light in some areas. And some things are more of a emergency than others. Some things that we do are just aren't emergency. They're not. But in some corporations, there are some things that are true emergencies. And you know, having that support for on-call or emergency support, I'm not saying that shouldn't be addressed. I'm talking about more just in general where 
uh, managers don't let their their people have free time, and they're mm-hmm. saying, you know, I, I don't trust you, you don't trust me, so we have to keep each other really close. Yeah, and I, I've I've done the offer to to be available for emergencies. You know, I've had that conversation, like you know, the times where I'm completely shutting down for a week, week and a half. It's like that. Hey, here's here's the coverage while I'm out. But honestly, if the building is burning down, you know, it's that kind of emergency and maybe I can help solve something for other quickly, call me. Chances are, you know, maybe a 30 minute conversation can help at least point someone in the right direction to, to solve, a, solve a critical issue. But yeah, to your point of you know, managers saying, yeah, okay, yeah, it's great, you're off, you're, you're sitting on the beach with you know, your family, still need you checking in a couple times a day and making sure emails are responded to. Um, yeah, that, 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 that's, that, that's devious and that, that is a problem. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I think uh, I, I think again, you you really need to look at it as twofold. As an individual, as an employee, you know, we need to evaluate how we process information, how we process things, and and the always on thing. I think is a is a good conversation to surface back up, and we probably should link up that episode in the show notes mm-hmm. for this one because I think it's a really good conversation in general, just to realize that we have that kind of built into our psyche now, and our kids have that built into their psyche that it's like we're always. We're always connected. Um, and the other thing, the trust thing, I think, um, if, if we're feeling that, then I think that needs to be addressed with with your team and open and honest communication so that, that that trust level is there that, you know, we're not all out for just ourselves and we're going to stab Jim in the back when he leaves, that, that you have, you know, our, our support and, and vice versa. Um, and then again, the last thing is at an organizational level, we should take a look at it. If we're seeing that our team isn't taking time off, we should really shine the light back on ourselves and saying, are we doing things to, to cause that? Are we not creating a supportive environment? If they are taking time off, are we making it so miserable that they just don't want to do mm-hmm. it? You know, we really need to be honest with ourselves to say, um, again, I really love the idea that he left floated out that it's like, you, you can't just offer the time off. You have to also offer a support system so that employees can truly use that benefit. Yeah, and I think it's uh, I totally respect that that's hard to ask for because we're basically saying as an owner, as a manager, you have to do that as an organization, you have to do that. And um, I'm sure that most of our listeners are kind of, you know, uh, having to deal with the fact that they are you know, within that environment that they don't have control around the guidelines that are being put into place and the support system that's being offered. So I think from an individual perspective, trying to kind of think of what an individual can do in this scenario to better the situation for them, despite of lack of structure, um, is maybe to... um, Put, put related, you know, one in August, one in March, or whatever, and da 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 da. What's happening? Did we lose you, Laura? Was that just me? Okay, so yeah, I was <laughs> no, I was seeing Jason like <laughs> wave or something. Um, yeah, I was, I was just kind of thinking. Uh, <laughs> I was just thinking that. Um, it might help to for the individual to kind of say, "Look, you know, uh, I'm I'm going to take a, a vacation every six mo- uh, every six months. It's going to be for a week and a half or a week, uh, for sure. And then I'm also going to be off for spring break when my kids are out uh, once a year until they're you know 18 or whatever. And kind of say, "Look, this is this is my structure, uh, and kind of offer it to the to the manager to ahead of time kind of see the fact that it needs to be." plan and almost like asking for the support and kind of saying, look, you know, I'm putting it out there in a structured way, you know, can you support that? Can you help me kind of lead uh, up to that time frame and make sure that there's no conflicting vacations with other people? Because this is what I need. You know, I need this, this structure. So, you know, if that's helpful, um, you know, if, if the you know, organization itself is not offering that support. I think maybe at the individual level it could help. 
I kind of want to throw a little wrench into the conversation here, but I don't know that I want to get us too far deviated off of the framework that you put in place, Jim. But as as everyone's been talking, one of the things that I started thinking about is, and I you know I I don't see it in the infographic, and I know I don't know if it's something that would ever show up on any survey or or any data to back it up, but I wonder how much tenure and the life span of an employee plays into this. And I, mm. I say that meaning that um, we've, we've gotten into an environment where there's really um, a lot of volatility in employee-employer relationships where people are just constantly on the move. And it's kind of built it into our framework that as an employee, I need to bleed as much out of the organization I can in, in as short a period of time as I can. And conversely, the the organization is thinking the same way. I don't know how long employee X is going to be around, so I'm going to get as much out of them as I can in such a short period of time. You know, and if we contrast that to our parents or our grandparents' generation, where oftentimes they stayed with employers for 20, 30 plus years, does that change the timeline? Whereas vacation in that scenario may be hey, I want Jim to stick around for a long time and giving him a vacation now is is putting, you know, deposit in the bank for his um, long-term longevity with the company. But if, you know, if we don't view it that way, you know, I don't care if you take a vacation right now, you're not going to be around very long anyway, so I need to get the most out of you I can right now. Yes. Um, and actually, I think that that's a good way of looking into the last car- uh, the last perspective here. So, yes, they don't necessarily talk about, like, tenure... One of the things they do talk about, like the, the next category is derailing a career. And one of the things they're saying is the trend really goes with those employees between the ages of 25 and 34. And one of the reasons why I think this last category is is different is because I've seen this in other areas uh, of work with people. So this actually makes me think of a guy I worked with very early in my career. Uh, it wasn't necessarily not taking time off. He took time off. Uh, he made sure he was home with his wife and kids, but he was also a road warrior. He would leave on a Monday night and then get back sometime Friday afternoon, pretty much three to four weeks out of every month. He was constantly on the road. And at one point, like, again, I'm very young in my career at this point, and I ask him about it, and he's like, well, this is part of the plan my wife and I worked up is I'm not going to be doing this my entire career. I was, you know, me, I was maybe 21, 22. He was mid-30s. And he's like, this is the plan my wife and I put together where this is only going to be for the next five to eight years. But it's going to get us where we want to be in 15 years, right? You know, all, you know, traveling this much is going to help put me in a spot where, there are certain things we want in 15 years, and this is going to get us there. So it's like the doing the grind right now to get there. And I think that's what, what some people are doing, I think. And it's maybe not necessarily a bad thing, where I think the other areas are, are definitely things that I see as troublesome. This one, as long as you have a plan saying, you know what, I'm 25, and if I grind it out over the next five years and you know not take too much time off... By the time I'm 30, I want to be at this point in my career, and you know, at that point, you know, I, I'll be able to be able to slow down a bit. Now, I mean, there, there, there's other cons with that, but again, I think if it comes down to choice and it's kind of like a short-term thing, I don't necessarily think it's a bad thing. Assuming that you don't have a complete meltdown by the time you hit 30. True. That, 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 that's a good point. Um, it's just it, the, yeah. I mean, I, I you know, I, I, I think seen it may other work. people do this. Sure, and I think it may work for, and, and again, you need to look at that on an individual basis. Yes. I don't know that it'd be something that I would necessarily recommend because, you know, you may completely burn out before you get to your goal. And, you know, we've talked a lot of, a lot about looking at things as a marathon and, and over time and going out as fast, as fast as you can is going to get you ahead of a lot of people in the short term. But in the long run, um, unless you hit that ultimate goal, oftentimes you fall further behind. You know, you just can't keep up that that pace. So, you know, you really have to judge, can I really hit the finish line going at this pace? If not, you, you're going to risk not finishing uh, at all. And my concern is you also build momentum. It's easy to say now that I'm going to I'm gonna shut it down when I'm X years old or whatever. 
Um, but once you've built up that momentum, uh, it's it's really really hard to to get it to just stop on a dime. Mm-hmm. Yep, yeah, that, that is a fair point. Um, but yeah, I think I, I think the whole concept of tenure and how long I'm going to be working, how long I'm going to be with a specific employer, and I and I and I guarantee that's in the mind of employers as well that. Um, you know, it's, it's short term. And so they're thinking, how can I get the most out of this moment right now and not, and not think long term? Um, and, and just, you know, from our perspective, I think we fought against that. Um, and again, I hate to keep bringing it up or maybe I don't because I think, you know, I, people keep pinging me. Um, uh, <laughs> who did we have on the podcast, um, a couple months ago? Um, I'm drawing a blank. I'm drawing a blank. Hold on. It'll come to me. Um, oh, Stephen Marshall from 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 East Tennessee State University. He actually reached out to me the other day. He's like, he's like, dude, you keep mentioning um, this uh, Patagonia podcast on NPR. Can you send me the link? So I, I hate to keep kind of throwing in the Yvonne Chouinard, um mm-hmm. mantra about building something for the long term, but it really does shift the way that you make decisions because if you're building to maximize in the short term, you know if. If what we were focused on at 33 Sticks was building up the facade of a fast-growing company that we're looking to get acquired by a larger agency, I think we completely change our paradigm. But we're not. We're, we're looking at creating something for the long term, and I think that dictates a lot of the decisions we making, we're making in that it may seem attractive to run really fast all the time, but over the long run, history says that we're going to be for, farther ahead. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was funny. I was actually messaging, uh, you know, talking with Steven uh, the other day because I want to have him on for like a back to school themed episode, like sometime in August or September. And he mentioned he reached out to you about that, 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 that topic. He's like, oh, make sure you talk to Jason about this. <laughs> That's awesome. And it is. It, it's, it, it's a double edged sword. Again, like, again, if you're disciplined enough to say I, I'm going to, 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 to put my head down and just sprint for a while. Knowing that I eventually have to come up for air, I can't do it forever and fall into the pattern of doing it forever. Um, so it's, I mean, you do have, have, have a good counter argument, which when I don't have a retort for it at the moment. Um, but it's, I think it's, it's one where if you're going to do that, you need to be disciplined. You can't do it yeah. for, for forever. For sure. For sure. So, um, how do, how do we wrap this up? In, in my mind, I think there's a couple different ways we need to, to take a view at, at this. In, for, for one, I think from an individual perspective, ultimately you need to do what's, what's right for you. Um, and hopefully you're in an, envi- in an environment that, that supports that. But you know, as an employee, you need to be making the decisions that are, are best for you. That's, that's mm-hmm. the important thing to do. And uh, if, if you're struggling with that, if there are reasons why, then you need to evaluate that. Is it just personal? Is it just how I process things? And I'm, I'm looking at things that are not really in reality. I'm distorting things in my head. Um, that's something that can be addressed. Uh, is it my current situation? And is it something that can be fixed? And and if so, you know, you should be open and transparent with your your team, your management structure to to address those those type of concerns. Um, if it's something that can't be fixed, quit. Go find a, a situation that is a is a better fit for you. And and then on the on the employer side, um, those of us that are are building companies, those of us that are people managers, we have a responsibility as as well to not only support. Um, and make sure that our employees feel safe to, to take things that are of benefit and that they, they freely deserve. But again, I, I love this concept that Hila brought up that we should be proactive in putting some support system in, in place to make it easier for our employees to take that time. And because we honestly, we all benefit from it. Um, but I, and again, you know, it's not something that we have thought a lot about. I think we've kind of done it organically but we haven't put a lot of thought into what should a structure be like to make sure that employees are are taking advantage of their time off that's something i think you know all, all companies should be doing yeah um you know to, to some of those points like as an employee like if you're feeling the guilt of taking time off and i'm not talking about like the occasional thing or something like that but if you feel guilty constantly with taking time off you know be vulnerable with your boss and sit down and share that information because, you know, that's how you're going to find out if, you know, your your boss, your manager, your employer um, is supportive or not. And I, I, I would like to think that the majority are. 
and they'll be able to, um, you know, tell you like, you know, that the fears are unfounded. You know, you're going to be fine. Just make sure you, you know, just do me a favor and plan it out. You know, plan to make sure that things are going to be okay. But, you know, if you have these fears, you know, they, you know, the, 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 they're unfounded. That being said, if you have an employer that doesn't support you taking off or discourages it or, okay, it's great you're taking off, but I expect you to check in. I, I'm just going to tell you, you know what, move on because, um, you know, the time is too short to, to just, you know, constantly be, be working. Um, to take the vacation, make the memories, you know, just go and recharge, you know, even if it's not like, you know, you know, if you're young and not necessarily have a family, just take the time off and, and, and recharge, um, you, you, you'll feel tremendously better. So yeah, if you don't have an employer that supports you with trying to take time off, I'm, I'm not even gonna say, well, try to figure it out. Like just move on, find someone who will. Yeah. Employers in general need to be less less of being jerky assholes, whatever, <laughs> right? Like, I, seriously, I mean, employees need to be treated better. Um, mm -hmm. And if you're in that situation, definitely find something there because there are really good employers out there. Um, find find something that that supports that. So, Kila, any last thoughts? Yeah. So, being the analyst, um, I wanted to kind of offer my thought process about time off in general and how it fits into the grander scheme of the entire year. Um, typically, the formal official holidays uh, are about, I would say, 13 days off, which is the equivalent of <clears throat> nearly three weeks off for, for holidays like Christmas and Fourth of July and th those formal ones. And <clears throat> If you take your vacation, um, it, it, it basically doubles that. So from three weeks off, you're, you're going to be at six weeks off. So if, you, if you took some three-week vacation or two-week vacation, <laughs> it nearly doubles that. So I think it's, it's certainly something to think about. The fact that if you don't take that, you're basically kind of only getting half of uh, the time off that you should in the entire year. And um, that's, it's very significant. And, always, and one thing, always the analyst. And, and, and to that point, I think it's always good to at least every once in a while take a solid two-week vacation because I, I did that a couple of years ago. I took like a solid two weeks off. And I noticed like you, you really start to relax finally after, toward the end of the first week. So then by the time you come back at the end of that second week, you, you feel significantly better. I don't, I don't know what that feels like, but I, I'll trust you on that. <laughs> now, it's a good conversation, and I think yeah, uh, lot, lots of takeaways for, for people, regardless of, of their situation, where they sit within their organization, lots of lots of good things to ponder. Um, I think Hila was a little skeptical about what we'd be able to talk about, um, but uh, we were able to really connect on some, some important topics, and um, yeah, good good conversation. Yep, I, re I really enjoyed this one. I think it's uh, it, yeah, it's timely. Good. Agreed. Go take summer vacation, y'all. Yep. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll right leave it on that. Go, go take some time off. <laughs> 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 All right. See you right. guys. Yep. Catch you later. Later. Right, bye. <laughs> Thank you for listening to this week's episode. We hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to reach us, you can do so by emailing podcast at 33sticks.com or on the web at www.33sticks.com. The 33 Tangents podcast is a production of 33 Sticks.